Vaikra, sacrifice, of course, but also all that this action implies, guilt, morality, forgiveness and peace. Upon further depth, I ask myself, why are they so specific about how sacrifice should be made? How do these rules clear one of their guilt? How do they forgive? Most of all, Vaikra is defined as when God calls upon. Who is calling for me if not God? Pasuk said, Adam Mikemki, a Khriv Kalban Lashem, when a man from among you will sacrifice an offering to God. What lesson is the Torah implying with the way the Pasuk is written? Through the word Karban comes a source Karov, to approach, come near, since through bringing a sacrifice one comes closer to God. Beginning with the first law, the Ola, what immediately comes to my mind is the process of Aliyah, an actualization that manifests through the mind of every diaspora Zionist. Interestingly enough, what pairs the thought of realizing Aliyah personally is the idea of sacrifice. I, a contemporary diaspora Zionist, live a comfortable life and actualize my socialist Zionism in Hashem el Moving to a land rife with conflicts, complex diversity, and troubling dilemmas forces me to sacrifice my easy life in the diaspora. But why will I still commit to it? For the same reason that the Israelites brought their offerings to the altar. People are naturally committed to the future of humanity and want to do good deeds for the things that they care about. Kolbanot are usually from animals, reflecting our knowledge that in every person there is also an animalistic soul, or a yetzerara, from which stems all the evil characteristic traits. The Torah here is perhaps teaching us that, in addition to bringing an animals a kalban, a dam kiachriv, when someone decides to draw close to divinity, then the word mikem conveys that this person must bring an offering from themselves. They must refine the animalistic instincts within themselves, bringing them to our spiritual part. Here we understand the meaning of animalistic qualities, not literal animals. To attain the connection with our beliefs, you need to sacrifice the animal in you. The peace offering, Shelamim, is a notion that we as Jews are aware of in present day. Israel's history is bound with war and peace, and we know that throughout its short history, our nation has known sacrifice like no other. I believe that this is what makes it so strong, its ability to sympathize and understand the bigger picture. When we are making sacrifices for peace, we are acknowledging loud and clear that we know what it is like to suffer. However, how is sacrifice a message of forgiveness to God and to others? Is it necessary to seek forgiveness? I believe that it shows that we feel guilt, and I think that guilt is a beautiful emotion. Humans make mistakes, but humanity is really bound by our regret of making those mistakes. We feel guilty when we are finally able to truly understand and sympathize with the suffering that our mistake has caused upon others. And thus, we make amends, and the cycle of good sets its course once again. The idea of sacrifice means also giving up something of value to show commitment. We don't slaughter animals today, but we value the concept of sacrifice. Sometimes, there is something that we really want, so we make sacrifices, giving up other things in order to achieve our higher goals. Vaikra lists different types of sacrifices from complete burnt offering to sin offering, a guilt offering, but also an offering of well-being. There was even a grain offering. It wasn't only animals that were valued and sacrificed, and it was up to people and their means. So, rather than focusing on the slaughter and the burning, let's think about what we value, what we want to celebrate, and how we can best connect to our beliefs. What are you sacrificing, and who are you trying to connect to?